They grace boardrooms and high-rises around the world. But these two brothers find their true contentment in the dust and dirt. I love being out here so much. And yeah, you know, mixing with the animals, being out on the land and then and yeah, mixing with the people that are doing the doing the day-to-day -day jobs for us. Here in Central Australia is one of their jewels, the largest organically certified land parcel in the world. Black cattle on boy and black bulls and then consisting of four properties, Nawi Tuma, Glen Helen, Derwent and Napobi. It adds up to almost two million hectares, just northwest of Alice Springs, and carries more than 35,000 head of cattle. But their operations aren't confined to just the Northern Territory. Ben and Mick Hewitt's empire stretches from the Red Centre to Julia Creek, to the western districts of Victoria, with cattle and sheep stations and pig farms dotted across half the country. In all, they run 200,000 head of livestock across more than 2.2 million hectares on 20 major aggregations of cattle and sheep stations. Hewitt is one of Australia's largest landholders and the biggest organic meat producers in the country. But to see them mixing in the stock camp, they clearly are still very in touch with their roots. Um, and it was very authentic. Like, we just grew up, you know, as wild bush kids, I suppose. And what a childhood it was. They have 120 years of pastoral lineage. Parents Colin and Linda Hewitt founded the Hewitt Cattle Company in central Queensland in 1987. They installed a strong set of principles and tenacious work ethic in their offspring, as well as good business sense. So they were, they were sort of taking less developed blocks, developing them, and actually starting to really get the, you know, up the productivity of those pieces of land that they operated on at that stage and really set the foundations for what we're doing now, really. The brothers say their differences have been a powerful asset. In his role as agribusiness manager, Ben oversees a lot of the decision in production management, while CEO Mick takes the broader deals and supply chain. If you can figure out the really points of difference, but also, as you say, strengths and weaknesses, and I guess own your own patch, that's where it works best because you're not kind of in each other's space. Uh, I will be eternally grateful for the rest of my career and my life to have a brother like Ben who has allowed me to express my greatest strengths and in doing so I've allowed him to express his greatest strengths and it's, it's our superpower. We're very lucky from that perspective. Colin and Linda Hewitt handed over to the Suns in 2014 and the ambitious brothers started to spread their own wings. We got to go up and work on large cattle stations in the north and we kind of saw what scale delivered in terms of opportunity. And so that, I think that kind of got the, the uh, creative cogs churning. And then it was a case of, well, actually, how do we get about doing that? But borrowing from the banks wasn't a model they wanted to pursue. The traditional debt-funded family model didn't seem to be really the route. You know, I talk, say to people all the time, think big. And that's really what we did. And we, and we, we as a result of that, we then went and um, you know, had a look around for strategic partners to help us invest. And really, the rest is history. An answer came knocking in 2015 in the form of a Canadian handshake. Canada's Public Sector Pension Investment Board was looking to partner up and invest in agriculture. They managed the superannuation of Canada's government workers, including the mounted police and armed services. It certainly wasn't the luck of the draw or that we certainly didn't get stumbled across. It was quite a concerted effort to find someone who would partner with us and actually um, provide the strategic support, I suppose, and the financial support for us to be able to take advantage of those opportunities that we could see. The Hewitts set an important precedent. We were one of the first, if not the first platform that, uh, that established that way in, in Australia, really that private and institutional wealth partnering. And as part of that, we're extremely proud of the fact that we're hopeful that one of our legacies will be that we paved the way for other families to actually explore that um, and maximise uh, that type of um, investment structure. 
It seems it was a reassuring first foray for PSP. Since then, the Canadian company has spent $4 billion on agricultural assets globally. It is now one of the largest farm landholders and investors in Australian agriculture. We didn't necessarily set out to be the biggest or the boldest or whatever it was. It was just to buy the right assets and then let the journey take itself along, really. The family started with four stations. With the Canadian investment, Hewitt spent more than $500 million to expand the hoof print of their property portfolio, venturing into free-range pigs and organically raised sheep. It has been difficult, actually, to be honest, and it's, it's quite humbling because you've got to learn a lot of things from the start again. The Hewitts say their Canadian partner company has let them steer the land acquisition. It was a monumental undertaking, but I'm not sure it's quite finished yet either. The Hewitts reject criticism of foreign land ownership and say capital diversity is critical in this country. There's all manner of ways to raise capital to grow a business and it's naive to suggest anything other. The capital of whatever form, provided it comes from high integrity sources, should be able to deliver great prosperity to communities across Australia. As to why they've leaned so hard into organic production, it just was very obvious to me that it was a space that really needed to make that transition, if you like, from cottage to real industry. And so having the scale or the emerging scale that we had, it was just I just really identified it as something that was worthwhile pursuing. Central Australia has been an ideal match for those ambitions. The region is fast becoming dominated by organic production. Very fertile soils. With a lower rainfall, there's less pests and diseases, you know, the grasses are sweeter, there's a lot, lot less inputs required in this area, so that's what makes it perfectly suited to organic production, really. It also fits their production philosophy of sustainability first. Looking after the land is paramount. The sustainability initiatives don't just end at the farm gate, though. The company wants to see the plans extend right throughout the entire supply chain. They've reduced packaging by 75% on their main line, Cleavers. They also have carbon neutral products and plan to expand further. Ensuring you're you know, producing the most amount of kilos of protein for the least amount of impact. Uh, what we are interested in, I guess, is actually how do we develop new methods, um, whether it be ways to capture carbon through carbon sequestration or carbon abatement initiatives. Hewitt employs 300 staff who seem just as passionate as their leaders. There's no veranda sort of managers here. Like, yeah, they're all out in the field with us and sort of, yeah, try to promote, like, get us to be the best, the best that we can be while we're out here. They also want their young station hands to see working here as a career platform. I actually probably say even more than be a place of career, I want it to be a place of opportunity. Um, I challenge my team all the time. I'm not going to be CEO forever, I guarantee you. I, I'm actually really excited about the prospect to feel ultimately um, rise to, to take, take that job from me. They've rolled out leadership courses and embedded those who show promise into other parts of the supply chain. You know, the, the steer that we have out in the paddock and then have looking at the product that is then being given to the Americans and being able to see the product that's then being taken to Whole Foods uh, and distributed to millions, well maybe millions of people around the world, really made me sort of excited and wanted to become better at my job here. Yeah, well, no, as in like, I'm there. Love of this lifestyle is shared right throughout the company. I can never get over when I wake up in the morning and see that beautiful mountain out there and going out and mustering um, in all the different, because it's all so different, all the different landscapes on these different stations that we work on. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I think, you know, day to day when you're handling the animals and, and you're seeing a response in the landscape or, or the animals and, and healthy, I think, yeah, you have those little moments where you, yeah, you are really proud of what you do and, and who you do it with. It's really, it's like living on Yellowstone, really, <laughs> minus the train station and <laughs> whatnot. And
They might be renowned in the ag world, but you could be forgiven for not knowing them. Landline's been given rare access to the Hewitt boys, who have been shy of the spotlight. I suppose that it is a humility thing, but it's also let our actions do the talking. Yeah, it's the main thing, so walk the walk and not talk the talk sort of thing, you know, yeah. We're not well known for being that comfortable with it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly, again, um, maybe a little bit of my upbringing, but um, I think humility is such a beautiful thing in most people, and uh, I always think that if you're a capable individual, you'll always succeed with a little bit of effort and resilience and a, you know, have a go, as we do in Australia. But in a world where scrutiny on agriculture is ever-present, they know the time for laying low has passed. It's critically important that we can actually, I suppose, tell the story. And now with our vertically integrated supply chain and the, and the fact that we're delivering these wonderful products to our consumers, we, we need to be able to be a little bit less humble. To be able to say things like, you know, feeding the world with a system that lasts forever, we need to be able to invite people in to actually give people confidence that that's actually what we are trying to do. Cowboys, yes, but big dreamers too in country that possibly can't help but inspire it. I think we just want to be, you know, want to be able to maintain that mantle of the world's most sustainable meat producer, really, and that's something we're taking very seriously. My, my dream is to create an iconic Australian business. I want to have impact, and I want to have impact that actually is seen around the world, not just here in Australia.